In this chapter of PySwim's tutorial series, we will discuss using PySwim to inject flow at a node during a running simulation. Let's start by going to get our example bundle to work with in this lesson. Go to www.pyswim.org and then we're going to navigate over to the examples page. And let's scroll down to the Café con Leche example. We'll download this bundle and unzip it in some folder. I've already done this, so I've unzipped it and we're here. There's a couple files that are useful to know. We've got your input file that we'll be using today in the example. We've got the example code that we'll, we will build together in this example. Uh, finally, note we have a PDF, which actually goes into detail of the lesson itself and all the code that we're going to be putting in the example output, as well as the mass balance checks. This is really valuable if you just want to understand that the approach is still valid. Uh, we also have a really simple PNG file that was uh, rendered using PC Swim, which shows really the, the network information we're talking about. And in this example today, we're actually going to inject flow at this node and watch what happens upstream and downstream with the HGL. We'll go ahead and build the Python module from scratch. So what I'm gonna do is make a new Python module in my directory over here, and I'm gonna use touch cafe con leche tutorial.py. All right, you see the new file is created. And I use an editing tool called Atom. If you've watched previous videos, you'll have seen uh, let me use this in action. So what I'm going to do is just kind of clean this up a bit. I'm going to drag in the file that we're going to build and then the empty file just so we can actually slowly build it together. And I'll walk it through line by line what we're actually doing. I'm also going to keep this PNG file open so we can quickly reference it as we step through the example. Over here, I've already activated my Python environment, an optional step. There is a, another video that you can reference in the list of tutorials that would help you understand the use of Python environments. Not required, but highly recommended. So the first thing we need to do is we need to import a couple things from PySwim. So from PySwim, import simulation nodes, nodes with the capital, nodes, links, and output. The next thing we need to do is we need to open the model with uh, Simulation Context Manager. For simplicity, let's just add our simulation loop. And then let's just say pass. We'll try to just run this so we'll get it going. Python. And then we need Cafe Con Leche tutorial, and we'll just see if it runs. Okay, I see we have a report file here, so we'll go ahead and open that and add them just to confirm it runs. Looks like we successfully ran the simulation. So now let's start adding information to the to this to it, so we can extract things out of the simulation. That way we can better understand what's happening with our in node injection. The first thing we want to do is create a node object for node A, which is what we're, we're calling node A is this node here. So node A equals nodes, pass our simulation hand, handle to it, and then we're going to get the ID 16109 node to connect to that variable. We're going to also do node B. And node B is going to be this upstream node. So remember, we want to watch the hydraulic grade line there. Equals nodes, sim. And then we're going to pass 82309 to that. And node, node C, same thing. And then node C is this downstream one. So 16009. So now that we have created node handles for all of those components, what we want to do is we want to 
start tracking information out of the running simulation. So if we've watched, uh, I think it was video 4.1, where we were extracting results from a running simulation for plot purposes, this is the exact same thing. So we're gonna run through this pretty fast. I'm gonna create five variables, empty lists, and what we're gonna do is as the simulation iterates forward, it's going to append values to those lists. So first one is we want to, to build a time step array. We're going to call it timestamps. The next one is node total flow, empty list, node lateral inflow. Fix that. Upstream head, downstream. For those of you who are pretty new to swim, there's a very important distinction between total inflow to a node and lateral inflow to a node. Lateral inflow is everything coming to that node except from the hydraulic network, where total inflow includes all of the flows coming from the connecting links. Next thing we need to do is we're going to add our sim step advance feature. And we want PySwim to interact with the simulation every 300 seconds. Step advance is, allows PySwim to step your simulation forward, and it reduces the frequency in which you interact with the simulation. And there's another video coming out soon about how this one works, but assume that approximately every 300 seconds, we are going to be able, PySwim is going to be able to intervene and get data out of the simulation. So now what we want to do is we want to add in, we want to start saving the data to these variables. We want to start appending the results as the simulation steps forward. I'm just going to grab that out of here just because it's, it's easier for plot purposes. We can save a little bit of time. Okay. And then the last thing I'm do, going to do is I'm going to grab all these lines down here because we've already talked about how to build plots so I just want to get right to the point so we'll paste those in here it's going to simulate an injection we haven't added that line yet but we're going to add in a minute injecting flow at this node but before we want to just run a quick example and I'm going to turn off the save fig line so I'm going to run this see if it runs okay we need to actually before we do that we need to import some of the plotting details as well. So we'll come up here. We've added the date time and then import matplotlib and then a nice date formatter for our x axis. So let's clear that and I'm going to run it again. Okay, so now you see the flow at the node, the total inflow at that injection node really probably follows what, what weather event is actually in here in example two. There's no lateral inflow in the node, so we're not injecting anything in there yet. And then the head upstream and downstream, you can see that it's pretty high for our upstream, and then our downstream is a lot lower. And, and there's a big slope in this hydraulic network. So the next thing we want to do is we want to use during the simulation we want to this is where we want to start injecting flow and the way we're going to do this is pretty simple if sim dot current time is greater or equal to date time dot date time 2002 january 1st at four o'clock in the morning, then what we want to do is we want to say node a dot generated inflow equals 20. And what this is going to do after we our simulation crosses January 1st, 2002 at four o'clock in the morning, it's going to call this method on the node A, and it's going to inject 20 CFS. In, the, in this case, this is always the units that your model, you're, you're expecting your results to be in. So 20 CFS, if you had it in MGD, it would be MGD or liters per second, depending on what you have it. And that's a feature how you set up your input file.
there's a special note about this before we run this. We're gonna we're calling this every single time Pi Swim hits this after the simulation crosses that four o'clock in the morning phase. Technically, that is not required. You only need to call it once, and Pi Swim actually remembers. Swim actually remembers what flow you had it set at. Therefore, just in this example, we're actually continuously calling that method but it's not required. Once you call it one time, it'll hold the flow rate constant. So let's go ahead and run this. And as you can see, as we hit four o'clock in the morning, after four in the morning, the simulation, the flow rate steps up to 20 CFS for the lateral inflow. Now you also see that the total inflow to the node jumps up as well. Just for fun, we wanted to look at the upstream and downstream head to see if anything happened. There's no major hydraulic grade line impacts. Therefore, if, if let's say in this example, you were going to plan to empty out a stormwater control system into the network after a wet weather event hit, I would argue that this is probably a pretty good time to start releasing that flow back in.